I believe we are live. Hey everybody. I got to back up a little bit because my phone is on a tripod and I, there's just, they don't make tripods bigger than me. So, <laughs> so I'm looking down a little bit, but it is too beautiful of a day to not be out here um, outside. Like it is just an incredible day today. So we are actually out, actually on the sidewalk, kind of on the steps of our office here at the Ogmandino Leadership Institute. So, um, just wanted to get out here. Had to get in the shade to get rid of some glares and stuff. We are close to the road, so I get audio is not ideal, but hey, hopefully you can deal with it because oh, I couldn't not be outside right now. Just absolutely amazing. Now, I'm usually up in my office, up in the top of the building here in the loft um, for these power sessions, but wanted to change things up, so hope you enjoy. I got my man Bobby back here, uh, our senior habit finder spe uh, specialist. Uh, and head of my support team and he is helping me out today so that I'm not doing this every five seconds to see any questions or comments that people have. This is one of the sessions that I try to do at least once a month that's more interactive. I've got some great things to share with you here in just a second. Looks like a better day. Yeah, totally Rita. It is a beautiful day. Lynette says, hey Bobby. Um, so anyway, uh, super excited for uh, the power session today. I'm just excited to be outside. This is nice. I think I might set up and do the rest of my coaching sessions out here today. So, um, but let's talk about some things first, okay? Let me set this down. Um, I've got obviously my my ultimate sidekick here, my whiteboard um, that knows way more than I do and is a way better coach than I am. But uh, uh, we're gonna talk about a couple of things today and then keep in mind, any questions you've got, anything that I could serve you with as a coach, okay? Uh, um, to talk about your business, your life, your relationships. This is that session that we do coaching on the, on demand. So I wanna make sure that that's available to you and you're kind of thinking about what you'd love to ask and what you'd love to dive a little bit deeper into. Uh, did an amazing event, speaking of Q&A and interaction like this, an amazing event with uh, Doug and Tia Wood on Friday night, uh, the Massive Momentum Tour, which is like 25, 26 different places across the country that they're traveling and touring in like the matter of like 45 days. It's absolutely bonkers what they're doing, but totally worth their sacrifice just from the one event I went to, let alone all the others that they've done. And my favorite part of the event was when we started interacting with the audience. And the audience started asking me and Doug and Tia and my dad questions. And we just got to dive into people's worlds and where they're at. And that's my favorite thing. And so I wanna make sure we get an opportunity to experience a little of that here on Facebook Live today in these power sessions. Those of you just joining for the first time, every Tuesday we're here. I've been doing this for almost four years now, power sessions. It wasn't until this year that we offered them to anybody on a public platform like this. Typically it's been only available through subscription and payment and it must be really time for me to say something really important because it just got really quiet with all the traffic. So <laughs> it's like, wow, I'm really noticing how calm and quiet it just got. So, all right, let's talk about a couple of things though. I mentioned talking about the circle of life as an entrepreneur. And again, as we talk about a lot of times on here, everything that we're talking about comes from the core of how we think. That's the basis of our company, this whole office, our whole dedication to what we do and what we have been doing for over 150,000 entrepreneurs and leaders over the last two to 20 years has been based on habits of thinking, being able to scientifically and mathematically measure how people think. Got a big old truck going by, so I'm sure that's a little noisier than, than other things, but seriously, I'm loving this. I hope this isn't driving anybody crazy, but I'm outside in the fresh air. We're under a beautiful canopy of trees right here in front of our office. So anyway, hopefully you enjoy. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the progression of personal development from kind of a different perspective, from a deeper angle than you may have considered before. And it's, it got me thinking about kind of the circle of life, or in this case, the circles of life. And a little bit of this uh, has me thinking like Simon Sinek who talks about always starting with why. And he did this amazing talk, one of the most popular TED Talks of all time with these circles. And, and as I was reading and studying and considering the mathematics and considering the, the, the importance of our thought processes and everything else, uh, it really came down to three things in terms of building your life, building your business, building your relationship comes down to these three things. And I wanna show you what happens when they're done correctly and talk a little bit about what it sounds like and what it feels like when they're not. So let's get started, okay? Number one is gonna be the core 
of what we're doing, the core of who we are, the core of our reality, the core of how we interact with people. And that's where, what we measure. That's why we spent $3 million and tens of thousands of hours figuring out how to measure people's thought processes was for this very thing. Um, we're, we got some special guests walking through. I'd like you to say hello to everybody. Hello. Hey. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm famous. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. So, um, beauties of being outside. Um, and and in a, technically on a public sidewalk. <laughs> My camera's not. Um, so here, though, we're talking about thoughts. Okay? This is the core. James Allen, Og Mandino, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, you name it, will all tell you you cannot escape from your thoughts. It's impossible. You cannot reach a higher level of, of consciousness. You can't reach a higher level of worldly attainment or, or of, of business or whatever it is without raising the level of your thoughts, raising the level of your consciousness, raising the, raising the level of your awareness around your thoughts and the way they're dictating your life. So this is the core. This is where it all starts. We skip this. Good luck, you're rolling dice, you're playing a dangerous game that will never be sustained. Habits are, we're, a slave, we're all a slave to habits and habits are determined by our thoughts and our patterns of thought. The whole reason for the habit finder, the whole premise is being able to measure your thoughts so you know what you're up against. You watch previous power sessions, you're gonna hear the conversations that we talk about, you're gonna hear about understanding the conversation you're having up here in your own head and everything else it all starts with thoughts, okay? So this is where the majority of our time and our energy, energy should go into, is understanding our thoughts and understanding how we apply our thoughts, how to participate in that conversation and how to be able to eventually dictate that conversation being the ultimate goal. But what we don't talk as much about in the last couple of power sessions that I'd love to expound on really quick is the next level, okay? The next circle being able to create an entrepreneur's life for success is vision, okay? Vision. It's one of the things that makes entrepreneurs so incredibly unique is their ability to visualize. Entrepreneurs can see the future. Now sometimes, and a lot of times, statistically speaking, about 90 plus percent of the time, they're unable to create the future that they can see, but that's why we're here, working through some of the hangups and some of the challenges that come from that. But entrepreneurs are given this amazing gift of vivid visualization. Now, every human being can visualize. Every one of us can see things that aren't currently happening in, in our current circumstances. We can see possibilities of, of amazing wonder and what we could create and invent and innovate and, and what we could have we can also go the other direction. We can go into worry and worst case scenarios so easily. And entrepreneurs can do this at an exceptional clip, an amazing ability, like just overactive, effortless ability to go into this space. That any human being can go here, but entrepreneurs, statistically speaking, okay, over 96% of them can do this so vividly, so clearly, that when they go either up here into what's possible or down here into worry and worst case scenarios, their body will react as if it's actually occurring. The same chemical responses that happen as if you were actually experiencing those two things come into play because of how powerful this gift is. Just unbelievable the gift that this is to create vision. The challenge is if we're creating vision without an awareness of our thoughts, okay? Vision, when done constructively, is something to create passion. And passion being defined as a willingness to suffer for things that we love. There is suffer, there is a law of sacrifice. The greater the, uh, the, greater the creation, the greater the sacrifice. The, the greater the requirement, the greater the sacrifice. The, the, the greater the result we want, the greater the sacrifice. So there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be need for passion, for a willingness to sacrifice, a willingness to suffer, a willingness to step outside of ourselves and to live bigger than we currently are. Not that we need to do that 24-7, 365. It's finding those moments that make all the difference to enact and bring to life our vision. 
And what prevents us from doing that more consistently, from doing that effectively, our thoughts. So without a healthy appreciation, a measurement, and even a good conversation with our thoughts, our vision just becomes a fantasy. And then it chokes out our thoughts. And the furthest we can get in these circles and these progressions of our world and our life in terms of, of where we're going is back into our thoughts. When we haven't figured out how to master our conversation of our mind, when we haven't figured out the principles of mastering our own thoughts and the habits that are involved there, the, the most we can progress is in this ring in this circle of thoughts. So that's what we're stuck with. We're gonna be able to think wonderful things about what didn't happen. We're gonna be able to beat ourselves up vividly for all the things that were wrong and all the things that we feel like we couldn't control and all this other stuff that comes from the vision getting poisoned by unhealthy thoughts. But with healthy thoughts, the vision becomes everything. It becomes a direction, it becomes a fulfillment, a happiness, a joy to be able to, to, to engage in that vision on a daily basis and extract, engage in the vision and extract the millimeters of how to get a little bit closer to that vision, how to get a little bit closer to creating it and how to be able to make progress every day with this joy in the journey, this passion driven life that comes from a healthy understanding of our thoughts. That's not where it ends though. That's pretty awesome in and of itself. If you can figure out how to handle your thoughts to have them work for your vision rather than have them be a substitute for not being able to get your vision. But the next one is even bigger and even more difficult to create. And it is the ideal, the ideal. So we've got your thoughts. That's where everything starts. This is the core of your entrepreneurial life, the core of your leadership, the core of your relationships. And the healthier they are, the healthier your vision is. The healthier your vision is, the more likely you are to be able to execute, progress, and move into it, and actually enjoy it while you're doing it. Rather than get started on your vision thinking about once it's gonna be completed the whole time, only to get there and find out that it's not as great as you wanted it to be, happens all the time, okay? And then, and then beating the crap out of yourself and wondering whether anything else will be worth it. But having healthy thoughts to drive a healthy vision to start to reach your ideal, you as a human being, your ideal, your, your realized potential. See, the ideal is something that we want to have a vivid vision of and supportive thoughts of but the ideal isn't something that is unveiled until the end. So important to find joy in this journey. So important to find ways to be able to harness our thoughts to serve us, okay? To be able to understand how it's going to support what we're doing, how it's going to support what we're creating so that we can find this journey of life to reach the ideal. But remember, the ideal is not revealed until the end. So many of us are trying to reach some ideal that is for a lot of us unattainable or is an escape. So let's go through this progression really quick the wrong way, just to give you a quick rundown. When we have unhealthy thoughts, especially ones that we're not aware of, what it does is it moves into our vision turning into fantasy or catastrophe, which leads to our ideal becoming un, excuse me, becoming unmet. This is gonna get hard. X, back. Oh, I'm writing upside down. Patient. Oh, it's getting ugly, isn't it? <laughs> For those of you who can't read from there, congratulations because it's not good handwriting. So here's the, here's the sequence. Unhealthy thoughts in the core lead to fantasy and catastrophe for a vision that leads to your ideal being unmet expectations. Expectation being a concrete condition for happiness. And so many of us, this is our reality as entrepreneurs. 
This was the stake in the ground that Ogmandino put 50 years ago to say, hey, you can't have an ideal or a vision that can make up for your thoughts. It is impossible to have a why big enough to solve the problem with your mind. Because guess what creates your why? Guess what affirms and supports your why? Guess what allows you to reach for an ideal to a greater realization of your potential? Your thoughts. The ones that are serving you, the ones that you are observing and dismissing that are sabotaging you, and then in being able to introduce the principles, practices, and processes to be able to go through this. And I just, yeah, I think, yep, it's because I'm on selfie mode on my live. Someone was just like, oh, Nikki said, and it's backwards. <laughs> Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So, note to self, when I'm gonna do a whiteboard outside, flip my phone the other direction. This says unhealthy thoughts, this is the core, which then leads to the next circle of entrepreneurial life, creating your vision, and then the next circle is being able to uh, head towards your ideal, to be able to create your ideal. And that's you as an intrinsic human being, your ideal, because if the closer you get to your intrinsic ideal, then the extrinsic rewards that you're looking for start to show up and the, and the systemic systems and structures to make life simpler show up as well. But too often we're skipping the real value here, which is, this is the whole premise of what we do. This is why we spend week after week after week in here and with our clients and groups and one-on-one -on -one talking about our thoughts, because that's where it starts. Now, one of the challenges is spending more time in your thoughts doesn't mean thinking about your thoughts. There are specific patterns and principles and things that you'll want to implement to be able to start to master this game. But these wheels enhance each other. You take care of your thoughts, and you're gonna start getting a clearer vision, be more specific about what you want rather than what most entrepreneurs are, and that's their way clearer about what they don't want, which is a dangerous way to think about life and you're gonna get clear about your ideal rather than your unmet expectations, okay? So, that's it for today in terms of any planned message. Thoughts leads to vision, leads to reaching ideals. Without healthy thoughts, vision turns to fantasy and catastrophe, and your ideal just becomes another disappointment, an unmet expectation. So with that, I'd love to hear any questions anybody has that are watching, whether about this, Anything else I've ever talked about, nothing off limits in terms of habit finder and thought processes, entrepreneurship, your business, whatever the case is. So um, just, uh, yeah, let me know. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kiri. Super awesome. Love Kiri Box. Um, anyway, lots of amazing people on here that I get the opportunity to work with, that our organization works with, that that Bobby's had the opportunity to work with. So those of you just joining us, I've got, I've got my man Bobby back here, um, repping as a mediator for our session today for this very moment. So questions, what questions do you have? I'm happy to hang out because it is beautiful outside, which is why I'm having all of you put up with the noise of the street. I'll, I'll be in the back another time. We'll get some shade and stuff and whatever the case is um, to be able to do that. But this was the only place I could find shade without a huge glare on the camera and stuff, so. Larry says, so if my habit finder shows some unhealthy areas, I assume we start there? Ah, great question, Larry. Great question. So, first of all, take the habit finder, which you've done, okay? So anybody watching this, though, that hasn't, go to habitfinder.com, it's free, you take it, and guess what, you get access to Bobby for, Bobby, you'll give him 30 minutes, Ooh. right? Yeah, Bobby 35. will give you 30, 30 35, <laughs> yeah. Do I hear 38? <laughs> Bobby will give you 30 minutes to, to help you understand your thought process. Bobby, are you trying to sell somebody in 30 minutes? Nope. No, we want you to understand your habit finder because we've found that it's way better investment for us to spend time giving people tremendous value about what this measures and what it does, and they can self-select. You spend 30 minutes with Bobby on your habit finder measurements, you're gonna have an idea of whether getting this stuff out of the way, shifting these things around, whether we really know what's going on and can get to the core of where you're living, you're gonna know whether this is a good ROI, a good investment for you or not. So Bobby has no instructions to figure out how to sell everybody that takes the habit finder. No, it's to serve, okay? And then fortunately we found, and this is something we teach a lot of our clients, people end up selling themselves when you show up and serve the way that we do and step into their world. So, but back to your question, Larry, 
Now you've taken it and you're looking at it. You want to have a balanced perspective. Everybody's attention gets immediately drawn to the unhealthy habits of thinking. Okay. In order to be able to go into this realm where it, it may be dominated by a few unhealthy habits of thinking, we're going to want to realize something kind of the prerequisite before we go into that core of our thoughts. And that is that we are not our thoughts. We're not our thoughts. Regardless of what that habit finder says, it's not you. And so as you dive into this realm, into this, this boardroom, I love telling people the picture when they're looking at their habit finder results that they're sitting at this boardroom and then six characters walk in for one of the areas that has six measurements. Okay. And they come and sit down and they start chapping and yapping at different ways. And you can click on the descriptions in your habit finder and see what that dialogue sounds like in the most common examples. Super important that before you get consumed by that conversation, you remember that you're the chairman of the board. You're sitting at the head of the table. Are there days that you come in and those thought processes are yapping at you and you just go, fine, fine, whatever, do whatever you want. And they sabotage your life. Sure. It's part of being human, but the days that we are more conscious and more aware, and we want to have those more often than not, we're never going to have every day like that. Og Mandino said only a worm is free from stumbling and I am not a worm. Okay. We want to understand that we're not our thoughts. Once we're in this space and continue to reaffirm this because your emotions will play tricks on you. You'll dive deeper into your assessment and it can be really easy to forget that you're, you're looking at two separate things. You're bringing you, who you really are, into the exploration of what your thoughts are trying to do. Also, you want to understand the natural gifts of your thoughts. Larry and everybody else, click on the green measurements. Spend as much time getting to know what your natural gifting sounds like as the unhealthy ones. And, and be curious about both sides, because otherwise we have a tendency to use one against the other. Oh, look at all my gifts. I don't need to worry about these. And Oh my gosh, look at what's wrong with me. And we forget all the gifts. We want to have a balanced perspective as we start to consider things and also be an active learner, Larry and everybody else, whatever measurements you dive into the green, the balanced ones, or the ones that are at risk, yellow, orange, or red, and the dialogue that they're sharing with you, you're going to want to jump into those and, and experience them and pay attention to them as you're living as you're doing life. Okay. Every one of us should have a healthy ratio of how much personal development we're doing versus how much work we're actually doing on offense in our life, on offense in our relationships and building those and taking them deeper and interacting with those we care about and connecting with new people on offense in our business. When we're making the tough calls and we're doing the mundane stuff and we want to be able to hear our thought processes out in the field. That's where it's tremendously helpful. So before you dive right into the core of your thoughts and drown, remember you are not your thoughts. You're going to want to look at the green balance and the ones that are at risk in balance. So you can see the value of both. And then you're going to want to start paying attention to them while you're living, while you're taking action, rather than coming into the laboratory of your mind, leaving all your research, leaving all your work there and then go out and try and live and then come back and work on it in retrospect. That's not how you grow. Okay. We prepare in the lab with the books we're reading, the seminars we're attending, but the real personal development happens out here. The real personal development ha happens out in the world. Uh, Norma says not 100% clear on thoughts and ideal. Thoughts and ideal. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Norma. So first of all, we're talking about the progression in terms of your personal development. There's your thoughts. That's the core. That's, that's the, the engine. Okay. Then that's the vision. That's the, that's the vehicle. And then the ideal is where you're headed. Okay. So we were just talking about the progression of how these support each other. Our thoughts will either support or sabotage our vision. And if our vision is sabotaged, we're never going to be, re be able to reach our ideal. Okay. The vision is what we, we can do in this life. The ideal is who we're becoming. That is the ultimate. The ultimate in this life is not what you accomplish, not what you make. Okay. Not, not the businesses you own or the number of people that work for you or whatever else it might be. The ideal is who you become. That's the ideal Norma. It's who you become in the process. 
Now there are people that would argue, well, I'm becoming a wonderful person, but I'm not, ex but, and I don't need that other stuff. Well, you missed the point, because the people who are becoming get the stuff. Whatever that stuff is for them, whether that's orphanages in Africa, helping millions of people who are starving across the world, creating multi-million dollar businesses and having super fancy cars, whatever it is, but it will never, it will be, they'll be able to enjoy those things on every level of life, give themselves permission to experience those things on every level of life and do so with balance and fulfillment because the ideal was the top priority. This circle out here, the ideal is the most important, who you become. But in order for that to be realized, you've got to start with your thoughts. So therefore, logistically, just supply chain, the most important in this case is your thoughts to impact and shape your vision that will shape who you become, your ideal. And who you become is something that is an intrinsic, infinite journey and isn't, isn't unveiled until the end. And so stop worrying about what people think about you because your ideal has not been unveiled yet. You are a work in progress. I love the quote, you're a work in progress and a masterpiece all at the same time. So, okay, hope that helps, Norma. Debbie says, sometimes thoughts move. I see myself slipping, but I'm trusting this as temporary as I pull myself up by the bootstraps. Sometimes thoughts what? Move. Move? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so our mind is very dynamic. You take the habit finder this morning and you take it again tomorrow, it's gonna be a little different. Now some of those differences, especially on an emotional scale, may feel massively different to you. But in terms of the thinking patterns we're looking for, they don't shift all that much. That's why we don't recommend people take the habit finder more often than about every six months. Otherwise it creates really inconsequential, circumstantial noise. But your mind, your thoughts are changing every day. This is one of the challenges with personality tests. First of all, because most of us have about seven to nine different personalities, you just think about it and pay attention and pay attention to those in your life that you care about. They show up with a little bit different personality, especially in different scenarios, different times of the year, whatever the case is, okay? And personalities, I love Dr. Joe Dispenza's definition, are simply emotions that we've memorized, okay? And so the challenge in terms of that space is we're memorizing different emotions every day. We're, we're constantly being shaped and, 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 uh, and pulled along in different directions by this mind, this other mind that Og called it, that never sleeps, makes us act in ways we do not comprehend, which is so important and this was, who said this? Who asked uh, about this? It was Debbie. Debbie, thank you. Debbie, so important to realize, yeah, your mind is never gonna stay right here. So that's part of the game and have fun with that. Sometimes it'll be totally on point and you'll feel amazing. And then something will happen and it'll knock you off course. Super important to not waste, to, well to not waste any is, is, is a, a unrealistic ideal but waste as little energy as possible being disappointed you couldn't stay in the zone. And turn that around by being excited that you know how to get back there. The whole point of this life of personal development, of, of self-excellence, is to be able to get to the best version of ourselves that's available right now a little bit more often and stay there a little bit longer. And when we do that, the best version of ourselves that's available right now becomes a little bit better. And then we figure out how to reach that one a little bit more often and stay there a little bit longer. And then that person, that version of ourselves becomes a little bit better and so on and so on. It, this is not about figuring out how to be some 24 seven, 365 ninja of perfection. That's often what happens when our unhealthy habits of thinking is using our vision against us and our ideal just becomes unmet expectations that we'll never live up to. And that it'll always be once we get there, then we'll feel like we're enough. And that's one of the biggest lies that we've been taught. Anything else? Okay, well, I think we're good. So, um, one else? Oh, uh, Dana says, would your future self choose that? First, I have to be able to see who I want to be as my future self. This is all in the process of becoming. So much goodness here. Absolutely, sharing some great words from Doug and other great mentors out there about understanding, it all comes down to, we've talked to the, about the marshmallow experiment before, like the brain wants instant gratification, 
but creation and passion and growth and excellence comes from delaying that just a little bit. Not for the sake of delaying it, not for the sake of deprivation, but because even doing, doing it just a little bit opens up your mind to consider other possibilities and long-term perspectives. One of the greatest things that I've used, Dana, along the lines of what you're sharing, was some of the greatest challenges I've had in my life from, uh, from bad habits to addictions to other challenges is simply stepping back and asking myself, how do I wanna to feel tomorrow? Or how is this going to make me feel tomorrow? And asking that out loud, and those of you who have been attending these power sessions know exactly why, uh, why you should ask it out loud because you've got millions of unconscious thoughts going on and 50 to 80,000 conscious thoughts going on that are, are creating challenges to be able to really rise above your own awareness and where you're at. So, okay. Um, oh. oh, Lisa Brady had a question. I think it was a while back when I was still blah, blah, blah. And so, you wanna take a second and see if we can find that one? Unless it only came up on mine, let me check. I remember seeing Lisa join. I love that. Lisa Griffin said, power sessions have been invaluable in battling thought bombs. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, it had to have been before these. Can someone type in the question that that was referenced? Oh, Tammy says, <clears throat> when stepping into another's world, how do you do that and still... Uh, oh, how do you do that and still ask for things you need so you aren't walking on eggshells to ask for permission? Okay, I'm going to have you ask that one more time. And then we'll come to Chris Pettit reposted Lisa's question. And we'll come to that one right next. Okay. Okay. So, yep, words move. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, ask it one more time. Okay. So it says, when stepping into another's world, okay. how do you do that and still ask for things that you need? Ah. So you are Great question. So when you step into somebody else's world, how do you ask for things that you need while still honoring that or not creating eggshells and whatever the case is? Okay. So first of all, that would be several power sessions put together. Um, the good news is that's one of the first thing we teach any of our clients. It's a process called intrinsic validation. On its own, I mean, it is, it's the money maker, right, Bobby? I mean, like, whether it's CEOs of global 100 companies that we work with, publicly traded companies, entrepreneurs, small business owners, intrinsic validation is, is everything. But there's a couple nuances to intrinsic validation that people miss out on. I'll highlight a couple of those for you, but then there's a whole set of foundational principles that allow it to occur. Because I love the example of the Space Needle. The Space Needle in Seattle, which is an amazing architectural achievement, it's just so cool. 70% of that thing's infrastructure is underground. So we get to enjoy this amazing spectacle, but that's only 30% of what was created to pull that off. And there's foundational things required to be able to connect with people the way that you're asking that take quite a bit of work. And so if, if it's something that you have a business opportunity or you're in a position to be able to consider, if you haven't already, I didn't see who asked the question, oh, that was these, uh, if, they're, if they're already working with us, okay? If you're already working with us, awesome, you're in great hands. Um, reach out to us through the channels of your group or whatever the case is to, to dive a little bit deeper into this, but a phenomenal question. Um, so, but let me get to the point. In order to step into someone's world and not be on eggshells, Okay. First of all, you got to care about them. And that sounds simple, sounds silly even, but it's amazing how many of us in the moment don't care about that person. We care about people. We want to serve people, but in that moment, face to face, we're anywhere but focused on that person. We're thinking about what we're going to say, what they're thinking about us, whether they might do this or not. How could I fit this into the conversation? We'll, we'll want to surrender all of that. And it's not a matter of getting rid of it. It's just a matter of, here's the conversation. Here's my briefcase of agenda and, and dialogue and everything else. I'm just going to set it down over here. And then I'm going to come have a conversation with you. I'm going to totally focus on you with no expectation of when or how that has to be picked up. And I'm going to connect with you and make it about you. Why? 
because I care about you. I also know that if you feel understood, you feel like I care, not just I care like a feeling, I care like in function, okay? I'm actually asking you questions, wanting to learn more. If you feel understood, I know your wall is going to come down. And we know, because it's clinically measured, that at least 40% of your cooperation and productivity is being held up behind that wall until you feel understood. And so if I can allow you to feel understood and that wall comes down, what's the likelihood, Tammy, that I'll be able to pick this back up without feeling like I'm on eggshells if that cooperation is high? Now, sometimes walls will come down, great conversation. We'll go to pick up the agenda and they'll go, uh-uh, wall will come back up. Well, at that point, then all we do is, oh, this seems like this created a problem. This being your agenda or what you were looking for, what you hope to get out of the conversation. Tell me more about that. And you just go right back into listening. This time you can hang on to it because the conversation's about this. It was about them first, went to pick this up. Oh, I'm on eggshells. Then say it. Hey, I feel like I'm on eggshells. It's amazing to me how many things we think about a conversation or wonder what someone else is thinking and don't just say it out loud. Hey, I feel like when we started talking about my business opportunity that you were just kind of cringing waiting for a price or that I was going to sell you on it. Is that true? Imagine just asking that stuff out loud. You know, or I noticed when we started talking about this, something shifted. Will you tell me more about that? That's one of the greatest ways because what you don't want to do is assume that you never get to make it about you because that's not true. However, the best way to make it about you is to master making it about them first with no time limit. You're not sitting there going, okay, when can I make it about me? When can I pick up my agenda? When can I make this happen? None of that, okay? Now, if you only have 20 minutes to talk, then let them know that. Hey, I got 20 minutes. I'd love to spend 15 of that just catching up with where you're at. And then depending on how that conversation goes, it take five minutes to introduce something to you. If not, then an extra five minutes to just chat, okay? So, and if any of this is flying over anybody's head and you've got a business opportunity, okay? You're in an organization where understanding how to connect with people, how to get their cooperation and their productivity, how to sell them something. And those of you who haven't seen Not Selling is Selfish, one of my power sessions from a couple months ago, I would go look it up, okay? It's probably the one I hear the most about from this year so far. Um, but uh, but also those of you with that are entrepreneurs, that there's a clear ROI in your business and what you do um, to be able to get out of this. It's it's time to it's time to make the sacrifice, make an investment. It's time to work with us on an individual basis or work with us in a group um, so that we can we can help you get through that. So, okay. Hey, Lisa's question. Yes. <laughs> it's a long one. Okay. When you are hit with resistance from all sides and all doubts start rolling in and you think you can't, but you know you can, where in the world do you start to get rid of that funky monkey thinking? Ah, uh, okay. So when there's a full on assault, okay? Full on assault where it feels like everything is against you. Everything is holding you back, okay? Um, Everybody's gonna have a little different way of doing this, but I, I highly recommend getting out of your environment. Go for a walk. Go write in a journal if it's something you don't usually do, okay? Because even that, writing in a journal habitually, sometimes we can take for granted and get the best of us with our own mind as it gets interwoven into even that activity. So that's why I say, if it's not something you usually do, change your environment intentionally for at least 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay, and just ask yourself, what do I want? And if what you want sounds like something to come save you, something to come rescue you, then you're gonna wanna acknowledge to yourself, hey self, life doesn't work that way, so what can I do? What's one little thing you can do today to prove that what you're feeling isn't true? Could be the simplest thing. I know we have our clients take out their phones, set a 10 minute timer, countdown, hit start, and just go do anything around their house or in their office or whatever they can for those 10 minutes and see how on point, focused, productive they can be for those 10 minutes, even if they don't do anything the rest of the day. And it makes all the difference because the greatest way to break out of feeling like everything is pulling you down is to not 
is to stop giving your mind's desire to solve everything. That's usually what created the prison you're in. But if you'll look down in your prison cell of overwhelm and anxiety, you're holding the keys. And it's one simple push, one simple turn to be able to have those keys make a positive impact for you with the littlest things, the littlest things. Because the brain, when it realizes it's it's being caved in on, we want to feel want to figure out a way to break free. We don't break free. We start acknowledging the pieces of our lives. Okay, heard an amazing keynote uh, on Facebook Live from uh, the Massive Momentum session in Portland by a client of mine, Susan LaBelle, who just gave this incredible keynote, so vulnerable about her life and her relationship, and just it was off the charts amazing. But she talked about she compared life to building one of those Lego kits. And, and it's just one piece at a time. And sometimes we've unconsciously built a lot of pieces that are kicking our butts, but we don't get to just shatter those because then we beat ourselves up for doing that or overreacting or, and then we're living, you know, this rubber band polarized life. We just want to find one piece, one piece that proves that what we're feeling is a lie and own that. And then once you've had an opportunity to consciously embrace that, find the next piece. Okay, cool. So hope that was helpful. Oh, looks like we're, we're right on the 45 minutes that I was planning on for today. So thanks for being here today. Thanks for enduring the audio challenges of being close to the road here out in front of our office because I, I couldn't pass up this beautiful weather being out here. Thanks for uh, helping me understand that when I do Facebook Live on my phone in selfie mode that everything's backwards. So I'll have to work on my talents of writing backwards. Um, thank you for being on here. If you haven't taken the Habit Finder, go to habitfinder.com. Take it, enjoy it, love it. Spend some time with my team, no strings attached, to be able to learn about your measurements. And then let's get our hands dirty. Let's talk about how the, the second half of 2019 is going to be exactly the year you were hoping for. This is a great opportunity to consider what have I been kicking butt at so far in 2019 and what have been kicking my butt and what do I need to sustain the butt kicking list? And what do I need to shift the list of what isn't serving me and is kicking my butt? So anyway, love you all. Have an awesome day. I got to stoop down here a little bit because I'm coming in to turn this off here with my tripod. Uh, thank you, Bobby, for your assistance. Um, Bobby's an incredible resource, an amazing asset to this organization. Brings a ton of life experience, a ton of love to be able to walk you through your results, as well as Catherine, who's also on my Habit Finder support team. So take the assessment. If you've already taken one and you haven't spent time with Bobby or Catherine, get in touch with the office, figure out how to get some time with them. If you've been on the fence about, yeah, I think it's time for me to take the next step in coaching, whether in a group or our home study programs or or one-on-one, -on -one, now is the time. 2019 is still very much in our grasp to make the best year of your life we look forward to helping you do it. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.